Okay, back again. Uh, I've decided to put another box onto this log and I'm just trialling a new kind of way of making a hive and it gets really hot where I am so I thought how can I keep the heat away from a hive um, and not have to drill out a whole log that's a lot of work and uh, make hives and I mean I've done heaps of them in the past but I'm a little bit over making them like that so I just thought there must be an easier way um, this particular variety of bee needs about two liters of volume which is you know roughly what's inside that probably a little bit more than what's inside that and these bees are brimming so what I did is I had a hive an empty hive a dead one um, it died for some reason I don't know why it just it had a queen it had eggs had workers and then it just uh, disappeared into the ether the bees just slowly dwindled away and and the activity slowed so I, I tried to introduce more bees to it but that didn't work so anyway it died and that was last summer that was a year ago now I think and so what I did is I put this box onto this hive and attached that hose to it and it's now got activity and eggs and all I need to see is eggs so I've left the box in its original position and what I'm going to try for this year is to get three hives out of one without actually damaging a hive I'm really not a fan of splitting them in half like when I started this I I thought that's how you did it I've, I've since learnt that there's much better ways to do things um, Someone once told me that if you need a job done, you find the laziest person you can. And they'll find the quickest, easiest way to do it. And that's pretty much my ethos with most things I do. I do it the, the, the wrong way first and get through it with brute force and determination. But then I realise slowly that there's a better way to do it. So this is the adduction method or the budding method. So... Um, that's got me a hive here and it was zero work involved and this is I've only just set this up like 10 minutes ago and I'm just sitting down now with one of my little dogs hello little one very scared little camper this dog um, so what I've done is I've got a 15 litre bucket and I'll just talk you through exactly what I've decided to do here and I know that generally in the wild you will find stumps of trees submerged in the ground that have been burnt off but there's bees in it because there's a big biomass of the root ball they work their way in as it rots and they live in there and I figure that the thermal temperature of the dirt is optimal for these bees so what I figure is why not try and uh, replicate that in some way so what I've got here is a 15 litre bucket it's sealed just by virtue of its lid and uh, what I've got inside is a 2 litre milk bottle inverted and then this hose goes into the handle so if you imagine the handle of the milk bottle this hose goes up and then down and into it and then you've got the void of the bottle and then at the top there's another hole and it leads out to this hose here well actually the hose goes into the through the bucket and into the bottle so the bottle is is captivated in the middle of this bucket and surrounding it is um sand and glass bottles actually a mixture of sand and glass bottles 
And the reason why I chose that is, uh, I think something that I learned a while ago about stone baking bread is the old people used to make their ovens with about a two foot layer of sand underneath. You know, the old clay ovens where it's sort of a big dome and they'd fill it up with sand and bottles and the heat won't go through. So I figure it's probably the exact same way this way. So the bottle's in the center of that and it's covered with gravel all the way around. And that'll keep the ambient temperature inside there very cool, probably cooler than the log itself. I do realize that uh, the thermal um, thermal retention of hardwood is like three times stronger than than concrete by thickness so you sort of take that into account that's probably an inch wide this is probably you know two or three inches so they're probably roughly the same but as you can see the bees had blocked this off over the last few days this is a great little idea this thing I love it um, and their entrance was up there. What I've done now is I've blocked that off and I've reinstigated this hose and I've joined it up to this bucket. And I reckon by the end of summer I'll have another hive there because this hive is so full and uh, not disrupting the the uh, the ecology in there by cutting it in half or you're opening yourself up to so many different problems there's those wasp things that come along and they attack and they lay big maggots they're huge I've had a few hives attacked by them so I don't cut any hive in half when it gets hot now and uh, as you can see all the bees are frantically trying to find the entrance to their house um, and what's happening is the bees that were inside are just slowly making their way back down. There's one in there now, you can't probably see it, but there you go, you can maybe just see him there. But uh, it's a slow process. It'll take three days to fully, um, to fully work itself out. The, the pheromones they're laying now, they're sort of telling each other that they're worried and uh, you can hear a noise inside the hive now there's a definite humming in there um, so they all know something's going on so I'm not going to touch the hive now you can see one one bee just here just a little black dot making its way up so they're going back and forward slowly further and further and further and eventually you'll start seeing them along here by this afternoon and um but I'll probably do another video and I'll probably make a couple more of these because these cost me absolutely nothing and there's about five minutes work involved all you do is drill two holes in the bucket and you cut a piece of hose to two two foot lengths and you put them pop them into the bottle and then you just fill the bucket up with sand put the lid on it and you're done um, that is the easiest way possible to make a hive I reckon and the beautiful part of it is when I'm ready I can literally pop the lid so in summertime next year or sorry the end of winter I can um, take this out and uh, I'll be able to transport that so much easier because it, it won't have all the weight of the wood but uh, get a good all-round look at it. I probably should have used a clear bottle, but uh, the milk bottle, which is the PET, the plastic, it's very similar to this plastic, but it's sort of see-through, opaque. Um, that's what I had on hand. But yes, the bees are, are making their way up and down now. And you can see... You can see, uh, I'm just trying to show you one here that's got pollen. No, I 
I can't get it. They're too quick. But there's probably 50 bees just buzzing around there now. And uh, I'm just waiting for them to start to come out of this hose. And so is this little one. Hey, don't you? You all right? I'll show you inside that hive. So there's plenty of activity in there and it's very full. You can see there's a plastic observation panel and it's basically full to the brim. They leave about a six or seven mil gap all the way around. And now uh, they've only just got enough room to walk. So I'll put that away. And I'll just sit down here for another 20 minutes or so and see if I can see any more action.